Good. Okay. Call our economic development planning committee meeting to order. I'd ask that you all stand for a moment of silence in observance of 9-11. item we have is discussion uh, privilege of the committee chair committee members board of supervisors to discuss items of interest regarding departments governed by this committee uh, anyone if not I think we'll take care of the next order of business prior to the resolution which will be the reading of the proclamation and Bob if you would Proclamation in regards to uh, Arts Week in Montgomery County, September 16th through September 22nd, 2012. Whereas the Arts Factory in Montgomery County began its existence on February 8th, 2012, and serves the communities of St. Johnsville, Minden, Palatine, Root, and Canajahari to support, encourage, and cultivate local arts, artisans, and venues of the Mohawk Valley. And whereas the Arts Factory of Montgomery County held its first official event. March of the Arts in March of 2012 at the Arkell Hall Center in the village of Canajahari, which was a meet and greet for local artists to exchange ideas between the Arts Factory of Montgomery County and artists. And whereas the Arts Factory of Montgomery County partnered with the town and village of St. Johnsville to provide refreshments as a fundraiser at a St. Johnsville Marina concert in July and invited local artists to show their artwork and whereas on September 22nd, 2012, the Arts Factory of Montgomery County is sponsoring a regional artist studios tour. Whereas March to the Arts will be an annual event as a fundraiser for the Arts Factory of Montgomery County, which will allow for the opportunity for artists to perform and or sell their artwork. Now, therefore, I, Shane T. Walters, Chairman, Montgomery County Board of Supervisors, do hereby pr proudly proclaim September 16th through September 22nd, 2012, as Arts Week in Montgomery County, done under my hand and seal, this 11th day of September 2012, Shane T. Walters, Chairman, Montgomery County Board of Supervisors. For those of you who don't know Bob Buck, Bob is from Canada, Harry. Bob, if you would like to, uh, we'll give you this. And do you want to say just yeah, I'd just tell like everybody to uh, we're say that we appreciate the support of uh, the supervisors uh, supporting the arts for Montgomery County. Even though uh, we are focusing on the western end of Montgomery County, we are working with uh, Mecca. We are working with the Cherry Valley Arts uh, Arts Work, Mohawk Valley Arts Association, and the Schoharie, or, um, Sharon Springs uh, Arts Council. And uh, we feel we really believe that the arts are really important to the development of uh, Montgomery County. So I'd like to thank you again. And I'd also like to thank uh, Robin Lasky for saving me for getting this in tonight, or I would have been in trouble tomorrow night. So thank you very much. Thanks, Robin. Okay. All right, our first and only item on our agenda is a resolution authorizing the Fulton Montgomery Schoharie Workforce Development Board uh, submittal of a Workforce Investment Act local plan modification for 2012-2013 uh, Board of Supervisors. I believe I sponsored this. We would need a second. Second. Larry. Discussion. Uh, the only thing I could add is that there's uh, information attached. Uh, if you have any questions about it, she, she couldn't be here tonight. I mean, no, she's not right? a part of the area. But she did attach this. Uh, mm -hmm. Move it to the full board. Is that good? Yes. Yeah, move it. Yeah. Move, move it to the full board. All right. Uh, that moves. I have nothing else. Is there anything under other? Hearing nothing under other, I look for a motion to adjourn our meeting. Brian? Larry? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Okay. We'll call this meeting of the Education Government Committee to order. Uh, 
Item one, discussion. Anyone have anything they'd like to discuss? I will say we uh, met with uh, Doug and I and the election commissioners met here a week and a half or so ago to discuss uh, the, uh, in regards to complying with the uh, ballot this fall or with the Spanish-speaking ballots. And I think it's quite a long, complicated thing, but I think the, we seem to have it all, I believe we've got it all set. Oh, everything's all in order, and I think the election commissioner has done a good job getting us in compliance with that. So, if there's any, if anybody has any questions, they can certainly ask uh, Terry. But any questions? Okay. okay, we'll move on. Second item on there is a resolution authorizing a memorandum of agreement between FMCC Buildings and Ground Unit, Fulton Montgomery Community College, Fulton County and Montgomery County, 2012-2016 collective bargaining agreement. I sponsor that. And I need a second. Tom? Discussion. Okay. Just a question for Dusty. In your in your MOA, it says uh, Article 44. There's been a lot of questions by different supervisors. Who are the 44 is with? That is, that is with um, Erie Postings. That's what we that's what we assumed. Okay. Thanks. If we want to go into a lot of discussion, we should probably go to executive session. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say that if there's any really specific to that. Uh, uh, I think that was just the question was who. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a pretty normal thing there. But I said if you had any specific questions, yeah, you'd be able to go into executive session. Any more discussion? Good choice, yes. by the way, this. Yeah. Sure. I understand the touchiness of the subject. I think we should go over the executive session. I'd like to talk about the uh, the uh, fee increases that I'm looking at. You want to make that motion with an executive session? Motion. Do I have a second? Michael? All in favor? Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Opposed to executive session. I'm opposed. No, on the committee. No, not the committee. No, that's <laughs> right. Committee members. Hey, well, I'm on the committee uh, opposed. Okay, we'll go to the executive session then. <coughs> oh, yeah, the other supervisor certainly can uh, want to stay. Uh, unless they don't want to. That's their, that's their choice, obviously. But. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, okay. Anything else under other? Motion to adjourn. John and Michael. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.
call the uh, Health and Human Services Committee to order. The first item on the agenda is discussion item. Any, uh, any discussion from any of the committee members? Hearing none, we'll go to the next agenda. And that is the resolution amending the 2012 operating budget and changing the title of vacant position, Department of Social Services. I'll sponsor that. Do we have a second? Barbara? Before I open the floor to discussion for the members, uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner McMahon if he wants to talk about this. Thank you, Chair. Um, you looked at the resolution. I, I think for some of the new supervisors, maybe a little history lesson on this position might be in order. Uh, in 2011, uh, the Director of Finance left, as well as the current uh, full-time supervisor, she also retired. So you have two of the top level administrators at the department did leave. We brought the part-time, we brought one back as a part-time supervisor. And, uh, she is the, the one we're talking about here. Uh, we had hoped that she would stay on board for another <coughs> six months, but she has indicated that she's going to leave earlier. And it's also a targeted position in the cuts coming up, the part-time supervisor. So essentially you're losing you're losing your 30-year institutional memory is going to walk out the door here in the accounting department at, at the end of this year. Uh, at the same time, we have a vacant position that came open just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, went to FMCC. And uh, so we feel this is a good time, actually a very good time, to train a part-time supervisor while you have the part-time supervisor still here. Um, I, there's 13 people in this department. And they all do very different and complex tasks. Nobody does the same thing. And currently, the director is doing all the training and doing all the oversight for those 13 people. And I think we are we are really setting ourselves up for failure if we put all our all our expertise into one leader. And that's what's happening here. Um, and generally, in administration, you know, circles or, or offices. You the supervisory to worker ratio is usually one to five. They recommend in accounting and finance offices, it's more like it should be more one to three. And that's because we do make mistakes. And with a $27 million budget, your largest budget <coughs> in our county budget, you don't really want us to be making mistakes. And I know Tina will tell you that we make mistakes. She'll, she'll be honest and she'll say that she catches a lot of it, but she cannot spread herself over that whole group of people. At the same time, we're training new people. And that's one of the things that part-time supervisors do, is training new people with new processes, new programs. We are forever getting new uh, new programs that we have to get up to speed on very quickly. I think it would be unwise to not take this opportunity right now to train a supervisor. And if you look at the accounting that we did, it's actually going to save the county money uh, in the long run. We're actually going to have to call savings of $5,200. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, we'll open up to the, uh, to the floor for any questions. Tom? Right now, the position is part time. Yes. Right now, it's part time, and what you're proposing is you want to take the vacant position of account clerk typist who just left no FMC or wherever. Take that money, incorporate it in with the part-time position to make it full-time? Yeah. That's what you're saying. We're going to transition that vacant to a supervisor. Uh, so what is that total, I guess what I'm asking is, what does that total number come to? We're going to keep the accounting part-time supervisor position. Okay. Because that's what we Part-time supervisor. We'll train you as full-time supervisor till the end of the year. Where's that full-time line? Is what I'm getting at in the budget. Where's that? So how, seven, how four, you, it would be the vacant. The seven, 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 four. Four. You're just going to change the title. Yes. Number seven forty-four is what it is. At the same time, you're going to lose lose the part. Well, what does that salary end up at? The salary is forty thousand seven hundred. Not it's a great pay. Not including fringes or whatever, that's the salaries that's part the of it. Salary. So this is money that the part-time supervisor is making now 
is in that line. And the money that was being, how much was the vacant position that left for FM? That check was $27,000. That's going to be incorporated into that for a total of 37 ish right? 38 And this total position is 40 40 so it's a net increase of 2,000 or so? It'd be a net decrease of actually 53, 53.65. What part of it did I miss? That's what we share. Okay. I mean, overall, forget about who, you know, right. for a minute, just the total salary is going to go from, yeah. if you combine those positions from like 38 to 40. Plus somebody's going to have full-time pennies, so. Well, actually, no. The, the full-time pennies was had by the person that already there. So that, that's already there. Right. Do I have that all straight? Yes. Right. I'll set that. Yeah. Anyone else? <coughs> Wishes of the committee? No. Move with the process. Move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item is other. Before we get into that, uh, right, you want to go into executive session? Is Dwight here for you? Dwight. Dwight's, well, Dwight, but we, yeah, Dwight's sitting here. We've got four people sitting here. We can do the executive session in the last. Uh, you know, obviously they came for something. What? Did you come here for to discuss anything? Or? We came primarily because there were apparently been some confusion about the way the job for my vacancy, my upcoming vacancy was posted and there were some questions I believe some of the supervisor had and some of my deputies and one of the other fire chiefs decided that we just make ourselves available in case you had questions or was any discussion. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Well, no, no, actually, what, you know, they may not want to ask, what is your interpretation of what we're, you think we're doing? Just so that we get this thing down right. My interpretation? Yeah. My interpretation is that you're filling the job in emergency management. I'm not sure what you're doing with the fire coordinator. Okay. Everybody understand that? Because that's the job that was posted was for the director of emergency management. I think the concern of the fire circle is what, what's happening with the fire board. Okay. That's a good question. Are, are we still under the impression that, or recommendation that it fit under somebody's department? That's a separate issue, but I believe the answer is that was the recommendation I made. I'm not sure what your impression is. I, I simply made a recommendation. No, just, just because of, you know, the, 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 you know, there, there's being work done on, on the 2013 budget, so, right. so it's got to go somewhere. So you're recommending that we either change its name a little bit, tweak it, and it fit under somebody else's that and the staff, whatever staff there is. All right, Brian? Yes. Okay. Just to clarify, though, there are two separate positions. There are two separate departments. And I think that's where the confusion is. Wait, which, which, which one are you talking about? Mm -hmm. There's a director of emergency management, and there's a county fire department. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. Okay. There's two separate departments. And I think the confusion is that there are persons who would be interested in the position of county fire coordinator based on my recommendation that the two jobs be split. Okay. When they were combined, it, 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 was, it was 25 and 5, right? Right. But so, and it, it's still separated, it's 25 and 5. Correct. There is a proposal in, in this, in, in one of the, um, under consideration, when we, we talk about the budget and the rest that well, there hadn't been 
deputies in the prior years. Are you still recommending that maintain the deputies fire coordinator in the future separated budget? I would say probably not. If, if the jobs were separated, probably not. Probably not. Not keep them in or not take them off? Not, take, not leave them in. No deputies. Okay. Well, there'll be deputy coordinators, but unpaid deputy coordinators. Yeah. That's what you're referring to. Well, there, I think in the budget, there, aren't there wasn't there, uh, there are two, two, two deputies that were paid. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're recommending that we go back to the. Okay. You good now? The fire court maybe we appoint that, or is that like advertised? Well, we appoint it. However, how we get the person is. Uh, recommendation from the departments. Yeah. And I think usually that's been run through the fire advisory board up runs up the command. I think what we're trying to do is get things together so that the emergency management coordinator that's coming in and the fire coordinator is so be at the same time. Not two months down the road that are, you know, a fire coordinator is appointed if that's the wishes of the supervisors. And underneath the direction of emergency management, too. That fire department should be underneath emergency management. At least to come and talk to them. You know what Emergency management director, fire department, come in. That was the other recommendation I had made was that you have the director of emergency management, that the county fire coordinator would report directly to the director of emergency management. And he's going to, he's going to, he's going to fall under some other. Well, that was an option I threw out there. You think that? Uh, I still think that's the best solution, yes. Especially if the jobs are going to be part time. I believe that that's. And then, okay. then, then, they, then I guess the, the other. Because the, the department heads are the appointing authorities. All right? So if, if we end up with emergency management or whatever title that is under some other department. Are we taking then a, an existing employee of one of the departments and, and, and that existing employee is going to do the part-time work or are we hiring, a, is there an additional part-timer to be hired under the guidance of sure the, pro well, the problem is how, we, how that person gets appointed. All right, because Both positions would be appointed by the board, from my understanding. Well, the problem comes up, but that'd be different than what we typically do because of the department that being the appointed authority. So now it would be the it would be the person right. that would be appointing that person. Right. What are you thinking? Well, it's not, he had a couple of recommendations. Yeah. yeah. One was planning and uh, the other one was public was works. Public works. Clerical staff. This is not clerical staff. Public works. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, so what you're getting to is then the department head would be actually the person appointing those positions. Not well, we, we, we sort of have to make it uh, understood that the that it won't be the department that making the appointment if we put another person in, our timer. It, it somehow or another have to be this subcategory of uh, did Rich I think talk to you about that one? They, did he express the concern about the, the appointment and the the department having not that particular okay. I think what Dominic's getting at is how can he answer to a director when he in in fact is the head of emergency management. The director would not be his boss in that regard, other than for clerical work and moving yeah. stuff around the office. I mean, I can understand, right. yeah, I can understand. <clears throat> we were lucky with you. We were lucky in the respect that we had. We, 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 yeah, we had, we had a, what? Uh, there are those that would disagree with that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> well, no, I, 
you know, we were lucky with you because we had, you know, a full-time person at part-time pay. Right. So the thing is that, you know, if what little staff you had, you're able to monitor your staff. Right. That won't, that possibly won't happen in the future. So it's hard to have some individual working. I couldn't do it. I never could do it. Uh, work alone, you know, all by myself somewhere. There are people that can do that, but I'm not one of them. So you, you are one of them. That, uh, so I understand that we need, you're looking for supervision over the top when, when your replacement is not around. My, my thought was that it would be in the best interest of the county to have a full-time director overseeing the administrative portion of the work. As far as the programmatic areas, the emergency management section and the fire section, I think those two jobs fit well together. I think the director of emergency management, even as a part-time employee, could oversee the, the fire portion. Those two work together very well and have historically for a number of years. That's my thought. Then we would have to incorporate your budget also then. Right. I'll say that. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. They were there. I just I was wondering what they were doing. So. <laughs> I was just wondering, and maybe Doug knows the answer, with county law, is that, can that happen? Can, a, can you have uh, an EMS director that's, that's going to tell uh, as an officer, a, a fire, uh, county fire coordinator, can they be responsible to the EMS? Or once you separate them, are they separate? Thought, this is the we first I'm hearing of this, but I, I honestly know of no prohibition to what's my understanding of what's being suggested. But it's up to the board. No, I, 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 I don't think it's I don't think that it's illegal uh, what's being suggested. Just for clarification, Doug, I believe the current law says the EMS coordinator reports directly to the director of emergency management. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's. In but I, 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 it's just my answer. 